So now that we've talked a little bit about what a switcher does, I just want to back up and begin at the beginning and show you how to power up the unit uh, and then set up your own session, your own project, um, so that you'll have a specific place that you can store your work. Uh, to begin with, when you first come into the room, you may find everything just asleep and dark like this. So if you need to, uh, you can turn on the switcher over here. I'm just going to back up here a little bit and open the little door on the TriCaster if it's not already open. And then just need to, it's hard to see, but there's a little toggle switch there that lets us turn on the power. So I'm going to switch that on. It'll take several minutes for the TriCaster to boot up. Uh, and while it's doing that, I also need to turn on these two large monitors. So scattered around the room, you'll find uh, just a remote control like this. And if you get back a little ways, you can turn on both of them with just one click. It's going to take a couple of minutes for the TriCaster to boot up here. So while it's doing that, let me just mention a couple of things about um, the process here. Um, the TriCaster is based on something called sessions, meaning that each user of the, of the TriCaster can set up their own session, their own project. And the beauty of that is that you can configure the, uh, the switcher as much as you want. You can move around the things that are on the monitor screens here. You can see different sources of video. You can flip-flop the program and preview monitors if that feels more comfortable for you. When you import graphics or video clips into your project, they're going to live in your project and they won't be visible in anyone else's session. Uh, and so you can really uh, customize the program to work exactly the way that you want uh, without having to worry about someone else, you know, messing up someone else's project or them messing up your project. The session files that we'll look at are actually very small. The video that you record on the TriCaster, the files are gigantic, but the session files are quite small, so they don't really take up much space on the hard drives. Um, as the TriCaster boots up here, you'll eventually come to what they refer to as the home screen, and there's a variety of, of decisions that we can make there. Uh, when you set up your session, there's actually a bunch of technical settings that you need to do, um, which get a little complicated if you don't have much experience doing video. So we actually have created a template session that you can use to create a duplicate of that, and then uh, it'll have all of those technical settings already adjusted for you. Um, uh, the beauty of that is that um, you know there's no chance that your audio is going to be messed up or your video is going to be messed up uh, because you don't have those technical settings uh, quite exactly right. Uh, you'll notice that while we're booting up here, the TriCaster switcher part is, is actually just asleep. This will all light up once we actually get into our project. should mention also that the, the TriCaster is connected externally to a graphics machine called a character generator. And we'll be looking at that a little bit later uh, in the class. But it also has the ability to, um, to create graphics within the TriCaster uh, computer as well. So now that we're booted up, you're looking here at the home screen. You've got this little ring of different icons on the screen here, some of which you probably won't use, like these two in the back. If I click on either one of these little blue icons, it comes to the front and presents me with other menu items. The add-ons menu here allows you to use some of their other software to do things like modify some of the virtual sets that we'll be looking at later on or create your own things like animated elements for your program. The help menu, as you might expect, actually allows you to go in and read uh, user manuals for the various different uh, functions of the TriCaster. So you probably won't spend much time with those. Uh, the other tools in the back here, as you might expect, the shutdown button would allow you to turn off the TriCaster at the end of your studio session. And then the, the other two here, the kind of orange colored and green colored ones, let me go to these here. If you're starting a brand new project, if you've never actually uh, done uh, uh, a program on the TriCaster in here, you'll want to start a new project. The list that you see here are existing sessions that people have created. So you'd be adding another one of those to the list here with your name on it. So I'm going to click on the little new button here to bring that menu function to the front. And you can see that there's a bunch of uh, selections here that I'd have to make, like the resolution of the video. And if you're not familiar with different flavors of high, high definition, this is one of those times when using that uh, template that I mentioned will make it easier. So what we want to do here is up at the top, uh, enter a name for our session. Uh, that can be the name of your show, it can be your name. So I'm going to just bring the keyboard over here and type in a, a, a name for my session that I want here. So I'll just put in my name. And I 
can put the keyboard away. And now, uh, notice right below that, there's a, a section here that says template. And the idea of this is that you can copy any existing session and, and use that as the basis for your new session. Uh, so it would be importing any things that are in that other session would come into your project and all the settings and so on. So I'm gonna choose the little pop-up menu here on the screen. And right at the top of the list, we have a test project and a template. I'm gonna use this one that says uh, dollar sign new template. And then it's also asking me where I want to save this project. There are basically four hard drives in the TriCaster, and so you can save your session on any one of those, the D, the E, the F, or the G drive. They're all the same. It honestly doesn't matter which one of them you choose. The D drive, because it's at the top, is most visible, and there, there are a lot more sessions saved there. I'll just go ahead and save it on the F drive for whatever reason. And you'll notice that these formats now are grayed out because we're, because we're using another uh, another template as a, another session as a template for this one those settings are already selected there then I'm going to click on the button that says start session and it'll take it'll create a new session for us based on the template with our new name on it basically a copy of that and allow us then to go in and modify it as much as we want without affecting the original session there so now it's taken us to a second screen here before we go on though let me go back to the previous screen. I can do that just by clicking on the big arrow in the upper left hand corner there and it'll back us up a step. And now you'll see that if we look through the sessions here, currently there's in the upper right hand corner there's a little D there. And so that means these are sessions saved on the D drive. As we scroll down we see here's another collection of sessions saved on the E drive. And below that we should see the new session that I just made down here on the F drive. So the next time I come in to use the TriCaster, I don't need to create a new session again. I can just use the one that I made previously. I'm gonna click on that session and it'll take us to the second screen. Here we have three options. The little green button is one that you probably won't use a lot. It's designed to allow you to go look around on other drives. So if you're trying to locate uh, a graphic or a video clip or something like that on, on your hard drive or on a thumb drive, you can go browse through those things using these controls. TriCaster now has the ability to import items directly from the, the switcher interface, so you don't have to use this as much as you might have previously. The red button here actually would take us to a graphics program. This is identical to the external one that we use in, instead, uh, but you can actually create graphics within the TriCaster, save them into one of those graphics bins that we looked at in the previous section, and then uh, import them or you know bring them onto the screen when you're ready to. But the, really the one that I use most often here is the yellow tab that says live. That's the one that will fire up the switcher here, bring up all our screens and let us begin actually doing something switching. So I'm going to select live so that it's in the front and then I just need to click on the button here that says start live production and that will actually take us into the TriCaster switcher and light up all of the screens so that we can see what we're looking at. Again the, the initial configuration is going to be how it was set up in that template that I mentioned but because this is a copy you'll be able to go in and modify this as much as you want to without affecting the template or affecting anyone else's session project. Uh, eventually, as it finishes booting up, you'll see the, the switcher beginning to come to life here and buttons lighting up. And eventually you should see all of our uh, screens populate the monitors here as you were seeing them a minute ago. Okay, so to begin with here, I just wanna give you the, the basic layout of the two rows of buttons on the bottom here. Talk about uh, what each one of them represents. Um, and then we'll look at how to switch between those different sources of video. So I'm gonna start here on the two bottom rows and we'll really be concentrating on those for this first section. All of the basic switching happens down here, not very much of it except for some of the more complicated effects happen on the upper part of the switcher. So starting on the left-hand side again, we have the red row, which is program, and then an identical row below that that's green, and when that one's preview. Whatever I select on the program uh, row here, you're going to see pop up on the program monitor up there, and it's just instantaneously switching to that source. Uh, if whatever I select on the preview row, similarly will instantaneously, in, instantaneously show up on the preview monitor up here. Let me just go through what all of these sources are, 
and then we'll go back and talk about uh, how to switch between them in a moment. So naturally the first four buttons on the switcher here are the four cameras that are out there in the studio. We have camera one, camera two, camera three, and camera four. There's also a, another camera here in the control room, which they refer to as the Elmo camera. It's like a little kind of overhead projector and it's useful if you want to be able to show uh, a picture or a postcard or a map or something like that. So that's the fifth button on here. The six, seven, and eight buttons here are actually connected to other pieces of equipment in the room. We have a, um, a DVD player, a Blu-ray disc player, and then there's also a connection to Studio B on one of those buttons there. So if you're doing some really elaborate production where you're using both studios, you, you can actually switch to see what's happening over in Studio B's switcher. And then moving on from there, we have some buttons that are not actually connected to anything. They're just empty right now, but we could connect up an additional camera, say here in the control room if you wanted, or if you had a, you know, a laser disc video player that you wanted to attach to the system. Uh, any sorts of those things can be patched into these extra buttons. Uh, one of the buttons is also connected to what's called the character generator. The character generator is that other computer here in the control room that lets us create titles like the one that you're seeing on the screen uh, so that you can then superimpose those titles over video later on. Uh, the net two button is it connected to anything but then we get to a bunch of pretty interesting ones the DDR1 button here is one of those two uh, video bins that I showed you earlier the bins at the bottom of the screen where you can store and play back pre-recorded video clips so we have a video of this nice lady if we want to be able to play that back for the viewer uh, we can play back pre-recorded video of any length that you want so DDR, DDR1 lets you access whatever video clips you might have available same thing for DDR2 it's just another video bin um, so you can actually um, sh you know have two different videos playing uh, back to back if you want or simultaneously in a split screen or something like that uh, the next two buttons here are graphics one and graphics two the graphics one bin is a place where you can store lots of different graphic elements so right now we have what looks like a title on the screen but uh, but I can select from a whole collection of different ones of those and then we also have that second graphics bin, the graphics two bin that's to the right of the first one that we looked at up there, where you can store still images like photos, maps, whatever it might be. Uh, we also have something called a frame buffer. A frame buffer allows you to hold animated elements. And those animated elements could be something like the flame effect that you're seeing there, a spinning logo, something like that. So it's somewhere between a DDR, which is video, and a graphic. They're sort of things like animated graphics. And then the last eight buttons on the row here uh, are some of the special effects that the TriCaster can create. I'm going to switch up first of all this one called ME1 here and show you an effect that you can create. Um, that's, that's a green screen effect. So this is a virtual set and, and I can take my friend here and superimpose him onto this virtual set. Um, so that um, you can basically make someone look like they're sitting on an expensive news set. And then the two monitors that you see on either side of the screen there um, will allow you to um, put whatever you want there. So you can show other kinds of videos, th that sort of thing. So we'll be going more into those a little bit later on. We have eight of those uh, buttons which are called uh, mixed effects banks. So you have ME1, ME2, ME3, ME4, and so on. Okay, so you have all of those different sources of video that you can potentially so show the audience. I'm just going to switch between cameras 1, 2, 3, and 4 for our demonstration purposes here. So I'm going to go over and select camera 1 on the program row, and then I'll select camera 2 on the preview row down below that here. And you'll notice now that we're seeing camera one on the program monitor and camera two on the preview screen over there. Um, I could, if I wanted to, just switch directly from one camera to another by switching directly on the program row. So whatever I select on that row is going to show up on program, but the only kind of transition I can do is just that instantaneous transition, which sometimes people call a cut. For any of the more elaborate kinds of transitions that you might want to do, you actually will be using both rows, both program and preview. So let's say that we have camera one on program now, and I want to be able to transition to camera two next. My first step would be to preview that on the, on the preview row down here, and I should see it on the preview monitor up on the upper right-hand part of the screen. 
And then if we travel all the way down to the end of the, the two rows here, this section of controls in here uh, is called the, the uh, transition controls. And these are where you actually execute the transition and how you choose the kind of transition that you're going to want to use uh, when you switch between the two cameras. The key for that are these two buttons down at the bottom of the screen, or the bottom of the switcher down here that say take and auto. Take is the most common kind of transition that you might use when you're doing a production. It's just an instantaneous transition between whatever's on program to whatever's on preview. So when I push the take button, it's just going to instantly swap those two sources. Now you'll notice they flip-flop their positions on the program and preview monitors up on the screen up there each time I hit the button it just instantly switches back and forth between the two and it also switches their positions on the program and preview rows here that we were looking at a moment ago so when I push the take button you'll see those two trade places like that so if you're just switching back and forth repeatedly between two different cameras you don't have to keep previewing the next camera that you want to switch to over and over so the take which is sometimes also called a cut is probably the most basic kind of transition that you might want to do. Let's say you want to do one of the fancier transitions that the switcher is capable of though. That's where this auto button comes in. The auto button is designed to allow you to do a, a, either a transition that's called a fade or you can choose from their collection of hundreds of different really fancy transitions. To do a fade, before I push the auto button, I want to look at the two buttons that are right above it here. There's one that's labeled fade and one that's labeled trans. These both are connected to the auto button here, and uh, when I push the auto button, I'm either going to get a fade or I'm going to get a fancier transition, depending on which one of these two buttons is lit at that moment. So when I, if I select fade here and then push the auto button, we're still going to switch between camera one and camera two, but this time we're going to be doing it by a, a more slow kind of blend from one camera to another like that. So you can see that as I chain, as I push the auto button, it's fading, it's, it's doing what some people would refer to as a dissolve from camera one to camera two. And just like when we did the take, the two sources are flip-flopping. So if I want to go back to my previous source again, I can just push the, the fade button again. Cuts are probably the most common kind of transition that you'll use. If you're doing something like a talk show that we have set up here, you'll be using cuts probably most of the time. And that's why you have that take button that's dedicated to just doing cuts. Fades are useful if you want to be able to transition from the current conversation that they're having to something like a video clip. So say that I wanted to play back a video in one of my DDRs. I could select DDR1 on my lower row down here to preview that clip and then when I'm actually ready to play it uh, all I need to do is transition to that and sometimes using that uh, that fade transition will seem like a better way of transitioning into something that's a significant change in the program, like going from live action to a pre-recorded video or to a graphic or something like that. So that's the fade. It's probably the second most common kind of transition that you would use when you're doing basic switching on the TriCaster here. Now the only thing that you can really change about the way a fade works is how fast that transition happens. And to do that, right in the same transition area here, there are two little knobs here, one that says select and one that says rate. Rate is the speed at which the transitions are going to happen. So if I turn the rate knob here clockwise, it, it sort of clicks as I turn it here, I can increase the amount of time it takes for the transition to happen. So now when I push the auto button, you're going to get a slower fade than the one that you saw previously there. And each time I do it, it's going to happen at that same preset speed. If I turn it counterclockwise, I can really speed up the transition. So if you want one that's, say, only a half a second long, you can do a much faster fade like that. So I'm going to select a different camera here. And then we'll transition using the auto button between those two. So we've looked at how to do a cut and how to do a fade, but just let me uh, show you that one more quick time. Say that we're on camera one now and we want to switch to camera three next. My first step is always to preview camera three on the lower row here. So we're seeing the camera that we're going to want to switch to there. And then when we're ready to do a take, the director will give you instructions to cut to camera uh, cut to camera three. So I'm just going to hit the take button and it'll have make that transition instantly. If they now want to cut to camera two, I would first preview camera two, then be ready to push the take button and the transition will happen instantly like that. 
if you want to do a fade, it's a similar sort of process. Say that we want to fade to camera one next. I would want to, first of all, preview camera one. So I'll select camera one on the green row. Um, and then I need to check to make sure that the fade button is selected in my transition section before I push the auto button so I know that I'm going to get the kind of transition that I expect. And then I can push the auto button to actually trigger the transition to happen. Normally when you're doing this, if you have a director, the director will be telling the person operating the switcher ready to cut to camera one or ready to fade to camera three so you'll know what, what they want you to transition to and how, you, how they want you to transition there. So you can set up many of these different transitions and things before the show starts so you won't have to be trying to do it during the production. Okay, so that's the take and the auto button to create a fade. Uh, if you want to see how fast the fade is going to happen, you actually have to look at the other uh, multi-viewer screen over on the, the left-hand side over there. There is a set of controls. Let me just collapse this a little bit. There's a set of controls right in this area which allow us to trigger these with the mouse if you want. But the little number right at the bottom here actually shows us what the transition speed is selected to. The first two digits in that window uh, are seconds and then the second two sets of digits are frames. In video terms there are 30 frames per second of video so if I set that to, to 0, 1, colon, 0, uh, or, or 1, 5, uh, 1, 15, that would be one and a half seconds long. So it takes a little bit of getting used to to think in, in frames like that. Uh, but if as I turn the select knob that I showed you earlier, I can, oops, sorry, the rate knob that I showed you earlier, I can change the amount of, of time that it's going to take to do the whatever transition that you've selected there. So you can see the number changing there. Alternately, I can also use the mouse to click on the little arrow that's just to the side of that time and choose from a couple of preset speeds like slow, two seconds, medium, one second, or fast, 15 frames, a half a second long. Okay, so let's say that I wanna do a fade again. I'm gonna select fade there, to turn the rate knob to select the transition time that I want and then I can push the auto button to actually make the transition happen. One quick little shortcut that you can do here on the switcher is that the rate knob that I was turning like a knob earlier also acts like a button. If I push down on that, it'll actually toggle between those three speeds, the slow, medium, and fast. So if we look at the screen over there again, each time I push down on the rate knob, it'll just quickly toggle between two seconds, one second, or 15 frames. So it's a quick way to reset it back to some kind of more normal speed if you want to do a transition like that. Okay, and then the third kind of transition that I want to show you is choosing from the dozens of different tra fancier trans transitions that they have available. To do that, the first few steps are like we did a moment ago. I want to choose what I'm going to transition to on the preview row. So I'm going to choose camera three on preview here. Then this time, instead of choosing fade as my transition type, I want to choose the trans button. Now the trans actually has dozens and dozens and dozens of different patterns that you can select from. You can, uh, you can preload up to eight of those at a time. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But let me just show you some samples of these. So if we look up at the program monitor here, as I do the, the different transitions here, you'll be able to see them up on, the, on that screen. So I've chosen trans, and now when I push the button here, you'll see some kind of fancier transition take place. That was a, a fade there. Sorry, I've got one loading up here. So when I push the button there, you can see there's sort of a cloud effect transitioning from one to another. It's still changing from your program source to your preview source, just like it did with the cut or the fade, but now it's doing it in some fancier way. So I'm gonna choose a different one here, and you can see a slightly different kind of, almost like a, a beam me up sort of effect. So you have a bunch of different transitions that you can choose from. There's just kind of a simple circle uh, that people sometimes refer to as a wipe transitioning from one to another. And then there are some that are progressively more complicated. So here's a little bit more animated version of that kind of circular transition. Do it a few times here so you can see it. And then there are some um, even fancier ones as we go along here. Oops, there's another one. So, so you've got lots and lots of different transitions that you can choose from there. Uh, and we'll look in the next segment how you can actually go in and customize that list of, of, of controls. So just to summarize this section, to do basic switching on the switcher here, you can select the source that you want on program and see it up on the program monitor. When you're ready to switch to that 
uh, next camera or other video source, preview it first by selecting it on the lower row, on the preview row. You might also have noticed that our program and preview monitors up here have different colored borders around them. The preview monitor is green, just like the row of green buttons, and the program monitor is red, just like the border that you see around the program monitor up there. Okay, so I've previewed the camera that I want to switch to next. Now I just need to decide what kind of transition I want. So I'm going to do a take first of all here. I'm going to push the take button to switch from camera one to, uh, sorry, from camera two to camera three. And the, the two sources flip flop. If I want to do a fade, again, I just select the source that I want to fade to on the lower row. Then I choose fade as my transition type first. If you want to change the speed at which that happens, you can turn that right knob as we talked about earlier. Then when you're ready for the transition, I can push the auto button to make that fancier transition happen. And then finally, if you want to use one of the, the snazzier transitions, I can push the trans button. That's going to change it from a fade to a transition. We're still going to trigger it by pushing the auto button, but this time we're going to get some little bit fancier transition on the screen, like the one that you're seeing there or that fancier circle white. Uh, there is one third way that you can do transitions uh, like the fades or the transitions, and that's this red handle that you see here. This basically just lets you do the same thing as pushing the auto button does, but lets you do it manually. So instead of pushing auto, if I wanna do the transition faster or slower, I can just move this fader handle from its current position to the other position, and it'll do the same kind of transition that I have selected here. So if I choose fade, and then move the fader handle, I can do a nice slow fade, or I can do a fast fade, depending on the speed at which I move it, uh, or if I select the transition button, then I can do that transition manually, either fast or slow, however I like. So the auto button and the fader handle, sometimes also called the T-bar, do the same things. One just does it at a preset speed, the other lets it do it manually at whatever speed you choose. So that's the basic switching function on the TriCaster switcher.